project or um, active transportation plan in the unincorporated area, uh, which is great. It's great that she, she made herself available. Uh, PAC members had some specific uh, suggestions for safer street crossings in Princeton and El Granada, uh, which is uh, one of the areas of focus of the plan. And uh, post-meeting, we provided her with an updated version of the Burnham Park plan so that she could incorporate the, um, the trail plans and uh, the, the additional crosswalks and stop signs that, that we've proposed in our plan. Next, um, most PAC members attended the uh, San Mateo County Parks Pump Track Community Meeting on November 4th. And so we had a discussion uh, about the design and whether there were any, any concerns or anything to bring forward to the board. Uh, it was very nice, Nick Calderon joined us for that discussion. Um, the general gist of the discussion was full support for the pump track and the uh, decisions made at the meeting was that uh, we did discuss for a while the parking and noted that the limited parking lot at Quarry Park frequently presents a current overflow challenge, especially on weekends and when there are multiple events like multiple birthday parties in the playground area. It's not possible to gauge in advance the impact of adding a pump track. So we anticipate lots of kids will ride their bikes there, but there, there could also be people who bring their bikes in on a car. Um, we'd really encourage Nick to consider uh, adding parking sooner rather than later, but not specifically in conjunction with the pump track uh, project because we wouldn't want to slow that down. So the general recommendation from um, in a motion Parks Advisory Committee to the board is to proceed with the funding, encourage them to look at, uh, at the parking and improving that general matter, but not as a caveat related to funding or the pump track. Um, lastly, following uh, board approval of revisions to the Burnham Park plan in October, we have um, Claudia and I and Marty have, uh, and also Tom Conroy have work underway to update the sign so that we can keep collecting comments on the current version of the plan, not with a particular end date, but if people have comments, we wanna keep the line open. Uh, for them to um, provide comments to us. And uh, we're in the process of updating the parks page on the website with the updated design. We've already added uh, Tom Conroy's presentation from October and a video of that segment from October so that we keep the most up-to-date information out there for the public to access whenever they'd like to. And that also has send us an email. I haven't gotten any emails since late September. Once all the materials are ready, I will um, put a link to it up on next door with uh, what the, how the board responded to the community comments and kind of how long the next steps are gonna be. So it might be a while as we go through various government reviews before they hear something, but they're welcome to uh, continue to send us their comments. Should I, I, I thought, I might consider saying the next thing you see happen at the Burnham Strip would be uh, likely to be adding the um, stormwater overflow tanks. So, you know, don't get excited. That's not the park being built yet. I think we should definitely post that information when we have it. Be excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> we can get excited it. about it, but don't expect the park. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to connect it necessarily to the park, but the fact that we're going to be doing work on this trip is really a good thing to share with people. I agree with you completely. Good, good point. Thank you for all the updates and the work that you've done on all this and for the past sure. work. Okay, that's all for me. Does, that, does anyone know if, it, it, will Sam be putting up an, a sign when they start the work so that we don't have to, because you know a lot of people don't get their information this way and they're going to see work there. And I think Sam should put up a sign. They put a sign up on the force main project. So I think we can ask them. I think yeah. we should ask them and, and I think they will if we ask them. Good. Good point. I'm going to make a note of that. <clears throat> For the wet weather story. You know, the, um, the, does it, is the timing of that set yet? Just expectations. Because the, you know, we're at the deadline for accepting the bid, and the, so they did accept the bid. Remember, we had the special meeting, and then 
I think just like with the pump track, work will start as soon as the uh, county grade restrictions uh, are up in April. And I think in, you know, now they're ordering all the, so, am I correct, Jeff? That this should, that, that project should start in, in April maybe? So spring, if I said spring 2021, let me, yeah, unless they get, yeah, unless they get special permission to grade on that, it will probably be, that sounds, that sounds late, but I haven't looked at the contract documents recently. I will check in for the timing. I think that's a really good question. I, I thought I saw something on a, uh, in the Sam report that they were going to start in Jan, late January. Okay. Well, we'll double check and let our community know. Good point. That's all um, Claudia, I think, has updates. Great. Yeah, I've got uh, some updates here. Um, <clears throat> potential winter classes uh, are dependent upon Cabrillo reopening the, uh, the schools. The date that I have that's most recent is January 23rd for staggered classes. And if that's possible, that uh, kids will actually be going back into classrooms. I would like to do a couple of after school programs <clears throat> in the office meeting room at 504 with a maximum of 12 kids and social distancing and mask and ventilation. Uh, but it's all dependent upon <clears throat> whether or not the uh, Cabrillo district determines that that's the right time to start reopening. Um, and the classes would be uh, the uh, beginning and advanced embroidery, which is what we did in October. Um, Anna Davidson is the extraordinary teacher, a retired El Granada teacher, and uh, <clears throat> she has a, a very strong connection with the school system. <clears throat> so that's for winter. And um, I just got an email from you, Chuck, earlier that said, let's hold off on any PAC applications. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I'll put that back in the, in the hold box. <clears throat> As um, Nancy mentioned, um, I, um, on the billboard, Marty's working on it. She sent me just recent, uh, just a minute or two ago, a uh, conceptual, uh, graphic. I'm meeting with her tomorrow, and so we should be able to get that in place um, sooner rather than later. The only question is, who's going to do the physical attachment? Um, <clears throat> we had a volunteer who did it the last time, and <clears throat> I don't know if, how do we get a volunteer to do it again. How is it attached? Do you know? It nailed on. I'll do it. <laughs> I, may be, I may be able to help you with a hammer. Okay. We'll get it done. Not All worry. right. Um, and also, as Nancy mentioned, the parks page, we're in the process of updating. And uh, <clears throat> I've been working with both Tom and Marty to make that happen. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see. A, the last thing on my list is that um, I got an email from San Mateo County from the from the parks that <clears throat> they were asking for anybody who wanted to input on their survey for the Quarry Park Pump Track. And uh, it just came in this morning, so I forwarded that out to our entire email list. So their deadline is tomorrow, and so they may or may not get any further input. <clears throat> so that's it for Parks and Recs on my end. Hey, thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. An update today from, I asked Tom for an update and I'm just gonna read this real quick. Um, k and is in the process of putting together a proposal for the schematic design phase, which includes further design development and production of the coastal development permit submittal. After we've had a chance to review the biological resources assessment, we will have a meeting with the county to review their process and to obtain a checklist for moving towards permit submittal. The county's checklist and the biological resources assessment are critical items for us to communicate an accurate scope of work to our civil engineer and other partners so that our proposal to the GCSD is as accurate as possible. 
Our proposal will include a general timeline of the next phase with milestone opportunities for public content, public comment, whether at board meetings or other public events as determined by the board. I'm hopeful that we'll have everything together for the board's review and approval at the December meeting. Hopefully we get that bio report soon. So I don't know if there's a way to check with them to see how um, they're doing on that biological assessment. I know one of the reasons we chose the firm we did was that they were gonna be speedier. So I don't know if there's anyone who can. Yeah, um, I'm blanking on the name of the firm. Matthew? No mass, I think, if I remember. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they, told, they, they told me they would have a report out by the end of this week. Okay. Excellent. So that's, that was a good update on that. And anyway. Is that report coming to you, Chuck? Uh, probably coming to me and Tom Conroy, because that's who's been on the email. But let me look it up here quickly, uh, Matthew. And I'll certainly circulate that to everybody once I get it. Good. So that's moving along. I don't think, I think we're still on track. I'm sure we're working on it. Anything else on Parks and Rec activities? Thank you again, um, Claudia and Nancy, for all the hard work. And I see some members of the PAC committee here. Thank you all very much for all the you Moving on to consideration. Uh, okay. Barbara, did you call for public comment on that last item? Uh, no. Is there a public comment on that last item? Okay. Uh, Barbara, I have a question yes. before we move on. Um, will the board make a determination of funding for the uh, park pump track tonight? No. No. No, we're waiting. Um, Chuck's going to be working with Nicholas Calderon to work out an agreement, and we won't be taking it up until we have some specifics. I see. Thank you for that clarification. We've, we've, we've already made a general indication of support and so without more specifics there's really not anything additional we can add that would you say that sums it up chuck yes absolutely we, we need to get a proposal from them and the framework of an agreement before we can finalize anything with the district board here okay thank you for the clarification anything else on that item okay moving on to consideration proposal with tech and architecture for a feasibility study on the old fire station. And as you may recall, the board agreed to sort of defer this to subcommittee um, to talk to the uh, several architects and select one, and that uh, uh, the contract could be approved by Chuck. Um, it's pretty much been approved by Chuck, but we're, we're um, because we're gonna vote on it tonight, just because we are, it makes sense to have the board engaged. And I'm, very pleased to int introduce to you right now, Rebecca Katkin, who is here at our meeting. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about herself and then talk a bit about the scope of what she has um, uh, proposed. Uh, and I think we have agreed that she will do for us with respect to the fire station. So. Hi. Um, hi, I'm Rebecca, nice to meet you all. Is my volume okay, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Hi, yes. Hi Barbara. Hi, good to see you all. Um, so my name is Rebecca. I'm an architect. I live and work here in El Granada, and I've been um, I've been working for myself since 2007. I do a lot of residential architecture, and I do a fair amount of commercial interiors. Um, I've done some art galleries and small museum projects that include office space and community facilities like. Um, film viewing areas, um, you know, and other kinds of small and medium group activities. So I'm going to be doing a feasibility study for you on the old fire station to help you guys determine if that's the right space um, for your future ventures and to help you determine whether the structure is going to work for you as it is or beginning to look at how it might be augmented or whether the site would make more sense without the structure on it. So um, there's you know, cost and budget issues involved in those decisions that I'm not going to be looking at, but I'm going to be evaluating the site and evaluating the structure. I'm going to make um, a regulatory report to you. So the, the work that I'm going to do is in a couple of different parts. The first thing I'll do 
is just look at the zoning and regulations pertaining to that building, the use of the building, and what you would have to go through from a kind of permitting perspective to convert it to the use that you want, um, and what the height and lot coverage allowances are and things like that, so that you know um, what the building is and what the site allows from a kind of legal point of view. And then the second thing that I'm gonna do is gonna require some interfacing with you, which is hopefully a thing that we can do at subsequent meetings um, here, which is that we're gonna develop a program. And the program is really just the list of your requirements and your desires for the space. So I have a pretty good sense of that. And that is also a thing that could happen in committee. That's up to you to decide how you wanna develop it. I will help to fashion a list from the information that I know about the number of workstations you have, the kind of community spaces that you want. But I think that there'll be a process of working together to help convert that into a number of rooms with at least rough sizes associated. Um, and one of the things I mentioned in my proposal, which I think is for you to decide, is how that process is gonna happen. I think similar to what you have going on with the park, you could engage in a broader kind of community outreach with surveys or, um, you know, you will have to determine together what the best way is to really fine tune that program. So in order to determine whether the building and the site can meet your needs, we need to have an agreement about what your needs are. Um, and then the third thing that I'll do is an analysis of the site um, and look at the building, look at the environmental qualities, look at where the sunlight is coming from, just look at simple things like the quality and size of the spaces and some of you know, you've got some big spaces there that are not currently conditioned. They're just they're, they're garage spaces, they're unheated, they're on raw slabs. So it's really exciting to have that kind of industrial space to work with, but it takes some kind of um, doing to get it to be space that's comfortable to work and live and have community functions in. So um, we'll look at all of those kinds of things and that'll return to you a kind of diagrammatic or graphic analysis that might look more like what you think of a, an architectural plan looking like. It won't be, we're not engaging in real design of the space. That's sort of a subsequent phase for you to undergo once you decide if this is the space for you, but just a very preliminary kind of graphic diagrammatic look at, say, offices could be here, break areas could be here, classrooms or big meeting rooms or whatever the things we decide in your program, how they could be allocated and what kinds of adjacencies they might have, what kind of indoor outdoor space they might have. So that's, that's basically what we'll be doing. Um, does anyone have questions? Anyone have questions? Nancy. Yes, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Nancy, you're muted. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to um, remind the board and uh, uh, let Rebecca know on our on the website, we're not a website on parks page. In 2019, when we did our community survey, we did kind of do an initial, what do people, do people want a community center and what would they like to see in it? And so that um, statistical data and all of the comments related to a community center are available on uh, granada.ca.gov slash parks. Oh, fantastic. What I have so far is information from your appraisal and your inspection report. So um, I don't know if Barbara or if someone else on the committee is going to be like a liaison, but it'd be great to have someone that I could work with to make sure that I'm on top of having all of that. I will make a note of that now because um, the more information that is available, obviously the easier it will be for me to, um, to do the work. Can you give me that website one more time so that I can write yes. it down? It's granada.ca.gov slash parks. And the board didn't agree to any of the wish lists, so but it's just that's our raw first community input. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're working for. Um, Matthew. Uh, hi, Rebecca. Hi, Matthew. Uh, at our uh, when we met over, you mentioned that um, getting there's there are no as built drawings of the that current structure yeah. and that uh, perhaps the district should uh, contract with another agent to uh, produce that. But now you have the appraisal uh, materials 
uh, does that uh, meet your needs or should we still um, have that uh, data produced? That's a great question. Do you guys mind? I don't know if it needs to be enabled by the host, but could I share screen for a moment? Sure. Okay. Uh, Did you share screen? I think I can do this. So if you can see what I have up on my screen now, this was emailed to me. Um, and this is a rough diagram of the building. Um, plus I have information from the appraisal report, of course, which is helpful, but just in terms of the dimensions of the site and of the structure, this is the diagram that I have and I can work from this. Um, if you commission someone to come out and do floor plans of the building, which is probably a, a probably a roughly a $2,000 expense, I would think, uh, they will turn around something much more developed than this. So um, I think it's a choice for you guys to make. I can definitely work from that. I'm not really engaging in full design with you right now, so I don't need something more. But when we talk about that last component that I'm going to provide back to you, the kind of diagrammatic analysis of the site, um, if you think that you're going to be using that for presentation to the community, you might want it to look a little bit more robust. You might want it to be a little bit more accurate. So the work that I provide is only as accurate as the tools I'm given to begin with. Um, I think given that we're looking at a really preliminary analysis of feasibility study and that I'm conscious of the fact that you guys are spending money on a site that you haven't even decided if you want to purchase yet, um, there's a, ch a choice for you to, to make there. I can definitely work from what I have. Um, Why don't we wait a little bit on it, but keep it in mind as something you, you might want to do sooner rather, rather than and, later. And I do, I do work with a couple of different firms that do that, but I could give you their contact info. Um, and I would say that they probably, maybe it's a three or four week process to get on their schedule, get the measurements taken, get the drawings turned out. Um, any other questions, Claudia? I would just like to say that um, I would like to volunteer to work with Rebecca as the, the input person, if, uh, okay. if that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, your comments? Uh, yes, Rebecca, uh, are you going to be looking at the suitability of the existing building for specific types of recreation activities. So as an example, uh, pickleball needs a certain size to be an official court. Mm -hmm. um, and is that something, is that the detail you're gonna be looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So for me to look at that, pickleball court would need to appear on that program. So that's exactly the kind of fact finding that I wanna do. And that can be, that doesn't just have to be must haves. So if pickleball is a thing which is of interest to some of the community, then absolutely I'd look at the size necessary for a court and figure out whether the space you have can accommodate it. I, I'm certainly happy to, to send some dimensional things for a typical courts if that's helpful. Um, the survey also uh, talks about some specific kinds of uh, features of a community center and the popularity of those. So that might be helpful for you. Yeah, that would definitely be helpful for me. I would say um, any information that you want to provide, I will take the information on court sizes and things like that is probably fairly quick for me to research myself, but anything you provide to me is, is quicker than me having to find it. Okay, thanks. Great. Other questions? And, and so what are next steps? Because I see this is being a little preliminary, you know, before being, you know, an escrow, we don't know what the plans are. I think we do need to start a process that maybe we could, uh, the, what Nancy talked about, whether we talk about another phase yeah. of, of messaging just in general. Because I, I come back to, I, I really want to define what we mean by community space as a board, you know, because we could do that. You know, there's office space that's going to be needed. There's conference space that's going to be needed. And so really, you know, and there's going to be potentially three buildings, three community spaces all right next to each other, all with conference spaces, all with community spaces. So I really want to make sure 
we're kind of looking at this holistically with the benefit being El Granada right there, not just kind of, you know, with blinders on. And so I think that, uh, you know, but, but what, what is the next steps in terms of uh, agreeing to anything or, you know, in terms of triggering this? Because I think it is, it is something we'll need to potentially save us money longer term with the seeing how much architecture fees could ultimately cost. But um, well, we agreed to authorize um, this preliminary review just as a first step. Um, we, the board at, at our last meeting, I believe it was our last meeting, author, authorized um, the committee, which was you and me, David, but you weren't able to join us for the interviews, which was fine. We understood that you were really busy right then. Um, and Matthew stepped in, but, um, and then uh, Chuck could authorize it. I thought since we're at a point now where uh, it was ready to come to the board that we could just pass it by a motion tonight. So it would be on the public record that we were um, accepting Rebecca's proposal, which was sent to all of you as part of the agenda. I'd like to um, have a motion to approve that tonight. And then I think we need to think about maybe putting on the, our next agenda um, you know, review of the existing um, community inputs that we have and ideas for outreach for additional community input. And let Rebecca get started on her process. Um, so that's what I see as the next step. Number one, authorize um, Rebecca to move forward with this contract. And number two, um, start planning for how we're going to incorporate community. And I do want to note that at this point, there is no indication at all that the fire station has a community room. So when you talk about multiple sites, there's this, but our potential site, and then there's um, uh, what might happen in the Harbor District building are the two two possibilities. So and I still think, you know, unless unless we feel like we're totally 100% confident that that last survey we did, we're ready to, to, to pass it off and say, this is where we want you to start. I feel like we're potentially just putting the cart before the horse in terms of all these options. And then in six months saying, you know what, here's what the community really wants. Can you explore this? And it just, we're just going to be starting over again. I, I just feel like maybe do we feel confident that, that we've done enough messaging? We're ready to run with what Nancy had talked about, or do we feel like we might need another phase of, of updating that, doing a survey just based on the community center, not mixed in with other stuff and, and you know what those options were. And then that becomes something that uh, is a directive um, versus otherwise, I just feel like we're just gonna, there's gonna be a lot of great options, but then you're just gonna I, have to start all over again and potentially another contract, you know, that, that gets kicked in. I hear your point, David, and I think that's important. Um, I'm going to ask Rebecca to address this, but right, I think her review is not going to be all that use specific. She's going to be looking at the building and what the constraints are and what, you know, it could be used for without saying, well, this room could be used for yoga or whatever. I don't know that we're getting down to that specific level yet. Rebecca, can you speak to that? Absolutely. Um, I, I, you're both right. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is look at the parameters for the site, the, the regulatory components. And so I can get started on that without your having the complete list of things that you want. Um, but part of what I'm doing, because I anticipated this issue, David, is part of my time is going to be spent helping you guys to create that list of things that you want. And so I think that what I've put in my proposal is that that'll happen by attending a few more of these meetings, or if there's a liaison, you guys can work out, hash out some of that stuff and then just present it to me. So um, I will be able to look at things, for example, as specific as how much space would we want for a yoga room or a pickleball court, but I won't start that until we've agreed upon the program. So the program is kind of the thing that will inform when I do the site analysis what I'm looking to see if the building can do. So I can start on a piece of my work and then another piece of my work will be helping you get to where you need to be. And you guys may want to spend time without me reviewing the information that you have and deciding uh, if it's where you want it to be. If you want a more robust kind of community outreach, then we can talk about that. And if that's 
if that's a really a really robust phase, maybe that would be additional services or under a different contract, but my contract does include some time to help you guys get there in terms of knowing what that risk is. And, um, and I see there's someone else with a hand raised for a while now too. Nancy. Thank you, Rebecca. I would just say, actually, uh, building on David's point, <clears throat> Member Park, our first community engagement was simply tell us what you'd like very wide open. And then with each iteration of community input, it, that was narrowed down to what's possible, what the board would support, and so on. So what we have in hand is just that first wide open, if you could have anything, what would you want? Um, certainly a, a, a number of things that, that probably wouldn't fit into that building. Um, as a pickleball fan, I can tell you, I was really disappointed to see those bays are only 20 feet wide because that's the exact width of a pickleball court. Um, and so I'm not sure it will fit. So, um, so I, I agree with David, this is just the first, if you could have anything, what could you want? But that's where we started with the park as well. And this is not a design in the park. This is, is this building even suitable for us to be thinking about for some kind of community center, which does talk, of course, tie into what you're saying about the uses, but we need to know a little more about this building and where we're going with it. Eric, do you have your hand up or? I, I do. I, I guess I, I have one, I have one question from the, in the proposal. I just, I didn't see, and possibly I missed it. I didn't see anything about a, a potential schedule. Um, and what kind of time frame would you be thinking to turn around the various pieces of the scope? Well, uh, it hinges on a few different things. And I think the biggest one of them is probably going to be the timeline necessary to cultivate the proposal because that's the, I mean, the program, because that's the part that could have a lot of community outreach. And I think that you guys just have meetings once a month, right? So we'll be kind of hinging on that for how we can communicate. So whatever amount of time it takes for you to, um, for, you know, for us to come to an agreement about what that is, I would say before that's happening, as you can see, I have a lot of like eight hours to do the research and provide a quick report to you for what the regulatory um, issues are. Uh, that could happen. Um, I would say as soon as I'm in receipt of a contract, I probably need two weeks before I can get you guys into my calendar. So let's just say um, I could present that to you, if not at the December meeting, at the January meeting. And then maybe at that same time, we could make some progress on what the program is. And then from whatever meeting you have the program, I would probably only need one to maximum two more meetings before I could present to you the site analysis. Um, and I see your list there is Robin and Pat, so I'm not sure um, who you are, but you have had your hand up for a while. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question for me? Uh, a couple of comments. Uh, well, one, one is that uh, a, a resource for you is the... Uh, Park Advisory Committee, uh, which uh, we are planning. One of the, uh, I bring it up now is that we are planning our schedule for our next meetings right this week. And if that is something that, first of all, the board is interested in us getting involved in, um, then we and you have a January. Did I hear a January time frame for some of your deliverables? Well, I think um, let's say if I were if if I were in contract today, I could provide you the regulatory report by the December hearing, um, but I'm not. So um, just depending on when that happens, I would say certainly by the January hearing. Okay, so uh, you know, count on. Can I, can I just ask Chuck when could, Chuck when could you have the contract? Okay, tomorrow. Okay, uh, tomorrow. All right, so go on, Pat. And a uh, uh, second, second point was, uh, are you going to be looking at the, whether it's uh, a trade-off analysis of whether we should scrape the building and start over or whether uh, just looking at the building only from, only, ha only looking at a building? Um, I, I am going to be looking at that analysis. I mean, again, I'll say I'm not going to be looking at that analysis from a financial point of view, which is obviously a big piece of it but I will be evaluating the building. And for example, you know, I know it's probably not the number one thing that the community needs, but just sticking with the pickleball court, if that were a number one item that we needed to have 
and it sounds like the building's not going to accommodate it because by the time we get interior walls and insulation built, we're going to have less than that 20 feet, then that would be something that I would look at and say, well, the building can't do this, but the site can. Um, so we might, we might come back with two to three kind of really, you know, diagrammatic floor plans, uh, at least one of which will keep the building and probably one of which might keep part of the building and one of which might just eliminate the building and start to look at what the space could provide that way. Um, if you want to get into, you know, a more aggressive kind of financial analysis, then we would probably need to bring on a cost estimator or another kind of professional who focuses on that. Right now we're just looking at a preliminary look at what, yeah. what this building can do. I think it's to get into the whole program of, you know, finding out what we are going to do. But before we, while we're considering the option of purchasing it, we're looking for some advice about what it's usable. Yeah, I mean, it, it's clear that the building can serve the functions of offices and break rooms and kitchenette. Those are things that are there already for the fire station. I think the bigger question is what the potential is for the fire truck bays. Uh, they're great big spaces that could be configured in a number of different ways and they could certainly meet the needs, the kind of bigger space needs of a community center. Um, so I think Barbara, it's a great point. We're not gonna get super detailed about um, what it could accommodate in this first phase. We'll certainly um, you know, go as far as you want us to, but we will look at a kind of macro level classrooms, maybe the kind of rooms um, we spoke, uh, Barbara, about like the kind of rooms that the Half Moon Bay Library has on the first floor that are multifunction and for bigger things like school auctions or other kind of community functions. So hopefully we'll be able to develop a list of those things with some priorities um, and, and go from there and get to the point where we're saying, well, the building can accommodate everything you want. We think the building can accommodate 80% of the things that you want um, or that kind of thing. Awesome. So yeah, well, so what I was finishing, I would say one is deal with the dichotomy between active recreation uh -huh. and passive recreation because you're the people are going to be all over the place at the end of the day i don't know if you're going to do multiple renderings or give us those options but you know i think it, that, that that's going to be the big thing number two like i said there's going to be three community spaces all going next door to each other one that has no, already been built the fire station only two there's not yeah, yeah. a fire station. okay the fire station the, the the lot right there i would like to see if we could keep her updated on what's what's going to go there, you know, walk the fire station if you haven't been there, because ultimately that's going to be one of my biggest drivers is what are we doing differently than the two other community centers that are right next to each other? Well, as far as their, what's, what differences in conference space, you know, everything else. And I think the third thing is more board level. I think that's where I'm a little uncomfortable. I feel like the board's been vague where we say, we're, you know, community center. I think we really need to define that. You know, it could be as simple as an email saying, based on percentage, this much percentage for office space, this much percentage for, you know, before we even get into design and all that, I just feel like there's so much vagueness when just to say we're going to buy a building for community center, I think as a board, there needs to be some, some type of directive at the board level motion wise saying this is what we want to buy the building for and use it for. And then we could let the process drive itself. But I just, I'm uncomfortable with the vagueness and I feel like we're jumping the gun and putting a lot of things moving out there instead of putting the community out there and letting them drive that, which I just feel more comfortable with. And so I'm just gonna be a little bit hesitant. And so keep those things in mind because I am gonna be critical in terms of saying, well, you know, what does this really offer? The potentially two other buildings right across the street, all government buildings, all claiming to be the greatest and best building that's for the Grau Granada, but no one really working in tandem. And so I will be, you know, I do want to see, you know, from that perspective in terms of what offerings are going there and comparing it to what the highest and best use of this property is. David, can you, I'm Thank sorry, you. can you clarify for me? I'm aware the Harbor District has uh, purchased the lot across the street, right? And that they're proposing offices and certain facilities there. What's the other space that you're speaking of? 
So yeah, that one, they're proposing community centers, office space on top, right behind that is a fire station that just opened. So they have a little small conference space. There's so, so between those three properties, potentially we're gonna have three government buildings and no one's working together saying, wait a second, why don't we take a step back and say, what are you guys doing? And we can maybe do something a little bit different, whether it's making making one conference room a little bit bigger to, to handle overflow or making a little bit smaller because the other ones are big enough and this one's more intimate. With the, I, I want to look at all those things. And and maybe, you're, you're way ahead of all we're doing right now is talking about whether... Really, and, and that's all I'm saying. I, I just I, I feel like as a board... I agree with you, David. There, I feel like the board's being vague, and that's fine. This isn't a huge amount of money, so you, you, know, you guys could run with it. But I'm saying that because the board has been vague, just saying we're going to buy a community center and not telling and anybody what... That. David, is it, David. I'm, I'm just saying, is it a museum type community center where you walk in, explore, open? is it, but, and, it, and so that's, that, that's my only point is it, it's a little bit vague at the board level. So I would like the board to, you know, maybe whether the next meeting will have another, you know, we'll have it again on the agenda, but really to define what each person, you know, what as board members, what are we talking when we say community center? Cause it is a vague concept that can mean so many different things. So we're starting with the idea of finding out what the constraints are on the building. That's our first report that we're gonna get from Rebecca. That's just a piece of information that's gonna help us go down through a process, just like you're discussing, David, you're completely right. We have a lot to do, we have a lot of pieces, we don't wanna get ahead of ourselves. But one piece is some information about the current building, and that's what Rebecca is going to give us and what it could be used for. So, may I also just say that um, when we when we do get to what I'm calling the program, which I think David is what you're talking about, what is the community center? So part of my proposal is some time devoted to help answer that question, but also um, I don't know if you guys have a liaison to the Harbor Commission. We just dealt with this. I'm also on the um, San Mateo County Coastside Design Review Committee. And we've just identified a person from our committee who's gonna be attending all the MCC meetings because we're finding that there's crossover and things that they may be doing that we're not aware of and vice versa. So I think it's crucial that someone- Matthew, you, know, Matthew. you guys are talking to each other. And when we look at community adjacencies, that's one of the things we'll look at this site next to the post office, close to, you know, the little shop in town. So we'll look at those things. Matthew is our liaison to the Harbor Division. All right, Matthew, yeah. We had, we had an ad hoc committee uh, and the Harbor District had an ad hoc committee when, uh, when the power shifted on that board, uh -huh. they did uh, at least half a dozen committees and that was one of them. So they don't currently have a committee or a liaison and of any sort, and uh, I don't know how we really push them to. to oh. yeah, and 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 let's not forget, you know, we could simply have Delia, you know, call that call them at a staff level, or I don't know if they're in Delia. Are they in downstairs? They are coming in. There's usually at least the general manager and one other person coming in. Yeah, so and I talk, I actually see them regularly. So okay, so Delia, why don't you pop downstairs? Sure. I don't want to keep this too simple. <laughs> Pop downstairs, <laughs> talk to them on a staff level, and yeah, I can get an update on the staff. Gotta get an update on you know they just had their elections and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So yeah. I actually talked to a the lot of flux on the political side. <laughs> yeah, I actually talked to the contractor who built the fire station quite a bit. He's got a couple of projects going, and I can he offered me a tour of the station, which I just haven't had time to do yet. So. I can find out about that as well. There's a virtual tour available supposedly from the uh, the uh, opening yesterday, the grand opening. Yeah. And yeah, if we could do that, though, set up and get the, the tour information, either set that up, also update her on the Harbor District. But I have it's, asked them, they have said message. there is no community. Yeah. I asked, I asked them okay. that there is no community room. Well, the, 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 the training room in that building. They had said I saw the virtual tour. It, it just is simply looks like a classroom that is set up for about 24 people. Yeah. So we'll yeah. find out more about that. I yeah, think. well, that'll be part of our information gathering for sure. It's definitely important. 
Yeah, and Delia told me that the, the I haven't had a chance this week, but Delia told me the fire chief responded in, uh, through our, our GCSD main thing. So I'll, let me contact him. I won't be able to do it tomorrow, but next, early next week I'll contact him and just talk to him about the process. I could even simply just get plans of the building and talk to him what, what meeting rooms they've got, what community centers. So I, I think we can do that pretty easily. Yes. And, and, you know, they did reach out and they invited me to go to the uh, grand opening. I wasn't able to, so Matthew um, kindly agreed to go. And then they had to, as we said, had to cancel it at the last second. So we find it. Um, anyway, so let's, um, there's no- If someone arranges a tour, I'd love to get in on that. It would be helpful. The tour of the new fire station? Yeah, sure. It'd be, it'd be online. It's an online it'd be helpful tour. to see what they have. They have the it's online tour available. Okay, I'll check it out. It's an online tour. They set up. It's just, uh, I think you, I bet if we go to the MCC page, the MCC page has everything. Great. <laughs> All right. So if there's no further discussion, do I see any more hands? I'm seeing more hands. Um, would someone and, like and, and just uh, on the final, the so what, would, what what types of things would be change orders in terms of with this contract? Is there uh, would something like that that wouldn't be additional charge out the scope um, of work? What, what would trigger change order outside of what what's here? Yeah, um, so I don't really have a change order process. That's more um, it's like a, a contractor process. But what I have is additional services. And so additional services are, if you ask me to do it, and I agree, and I will agree to do it, I'll, I'll pretty much agree to do whatever you guys ask. I would say, for example, if you want to have 3D renderings that you can present to the community, if you want to have community outreach forums that I attend and do Q and A's with the public or things like that, uh, that would be additional. I've allotted, let me pull it up. Um, I have allotted, you know, eight hours for each of the first phases of my time. Then I have some staff time and 20 hours. So, you know, there's about a week or a week and a half of work, which is not that much for producing kind of graphic content. So what I'm looking to present to you is going to be pretty diagrammatic. I think additional services would really be about if you want a higher level of production um, for, the, for the public. Yeah, and we're 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 leagues away from that. This is just kind of a general feasibility study. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've all seen it. Uh, and if there's no further discussion, um, we have a motion to approve um, Rebecca's proposal. I'll make that motion. And is there a second? I'll second, I'll second that. that. All right. Uh, any further discussion? This is just for uh, feasibility to look at the constraints and so forth and thing. It's not the whole program review at this point. It's just to look at the building and what the options are for us for the building. And Chuck will manage this contract. So, any okay. further discussion? Uh, I mean, I guess I would just say we should try to, I mean, if we approve it tonight, we should try to get it executed tomorrow so Rebecca can get going. Oh. Chuck says that'll work. That'll be fine. Yep. That, that'll be easy, Eric. All right. Um, can we have a roll call, please? President Dye? Yes. Vice President Clark? Aye. Director Blanchard? Aye. Director Seaton? I'll abstain just from the, t the timing of it, but it does look like great work that you've done, and I'm looking forward to it. And Director Sukumau. Aye. Okay. okay. Motion. I'd like I'm motion. to. I'm, I'm motion to Director Clark, seconded by Sukumau. Motion passes 401 with the Director Seaton abstaining. Thank you. And then um, I, I would like to stay involved with this project. And perhaps um, since Nancy Marsh will be joining the board um, next month, um, Nancy would be willing to would be a good person to serve on a committee to work with uh, Rebecca on this project. I think Nancy is willing. And so unless the board has any objection, I'd like to start out with that as our uh, plan for connecting with Rebecca. Are you officially, okay. uh, is there an official committee here then? Uh, well, no, it's an ad hoc committee. Ad hoc of uh, Claudia and... Yeah, no, 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 no. 
So well, no we staff. Can't have a, we can't have a committee because Nancy's not on the board yet. So right. So we'll. I'm just. We'll I'm figure that out. My right. my intention of doing that when when Nancy comes on the board. I think that makes sense because she's she was so deeply involved in the all the outreach to the community on both the park and the uh, community center. It's an appropriate thing, and then we'll work with the parks, work with Claudia on this as appropriate. Anything further on this item? Everybody feel like they said their piece? Great. Thank you, Rebecca. Looking forward okay. to with you on this. Looking forward to working with you too. I'm going to sign off now. It's nice to meet you all. Um, and Chuck, I guess I'll hear from you soon. Yes, will do. All Thanks, right. Rebecca. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Barbara? Yes. This friend Pollard, can I say something? I okay. wanted to. I, I wasn't able to get on the meeting in time to uh, see Jim's uh, commemoration. And I just wanted to say something to him. Oh, sure. By all means. Okay. I, I know this is unusual, but I didn't get on till about quarter two. It was all over by then. Right. <laughs> um, right. Anyway, for, to Jim Blanchard, I just want to say congratulations on retiring, and and I wish you well. And you've been a dear friend for all the years since you've lived here. And Jim has done. Uh, uh, thank you for serving on the Granada District all these years, and for all the work you did and helped us with Quarry Park, starting Quarry Park, managing it for 15 years. You, you worked on that and you've worked on other things in the community, Burnham Strip also. So thank you so much and I wish you well. Thank you, thank you, friend. I appreciate it very much. Good to hear from you and best of luck to you, to you as thank well. You. <laughs> Thanks, friend. Thank you, friend. All right. Uh, thank you. Moving on to district office lease. Julia? Yeah. Okay, so what we have is an option to extend. Um, it's an addendum of the original commercial lease agreement. Uh, the, the current agreement expires on December 1st. It was also a three-year lease, and they actually gave us a pretty reasonable, I think, um, agreement here. Uh, we're currently paying $4,000 a month for our monthly lease plus $250 for the uh, CAMS, which is the common area maintenance costs. And they have um, submitted to us the, uh, the option to extend, which would extend it for another three years. And the uh, increase would be effective on December 1st, uh, $50 and then the following two years uh, with $50 increments as well. So I think that's pretty reasonable. So that's what is presented here. And this locks us in for three years. It, Correct. It does, yes, because if there is early termination of this agreement, then technically um, the landlord can, is, can come after us for whatever rents are still due if we were to terminated early. Is it possible to to negotiate a two-year extension? I well, assume it's all negotiable. I actually tried to contact uh, the agent today without success, um, but I hope to hear back from him. If um, your intention is to have a, a shorter-term lease, I can certainly ask. We can bring it back. Give us more flexibility. Anyone else want to speak to this? Yeah, we well, could just make it everything the same, just do two years with a third year option to renew at the same price. And then just, you know, we would just renew it at a agreed price. And I think that should be a reasonable request. Okay, Chuck, should they go ahead and, and approve it with a two year or? Uh, yeah, what I, what I was going to suggest is, you know, I guess the only place we're going to be moving in the next year or two would be the old firehouse and that's certainly up in the air we don't it's not even for sale yet officially and even if it became for sale and we purchased it there'd be enough work there to do that we're certainly looking at two years anyway um what i would suggest is you approve the lease as presented and direct staff to see if we can negotiate a two-year lease with an option for a third year 
And if we can, great, and we can do that. And if we can't, you know, we'll lock in the three-year lease. So other, other, otherwise, we'll have to go back to him. And I'm not, you know, it's an option, obviously. We'll have to go back to him, and we'll report back to your board in, in December on those negotiations. Well, why don't we just ask you to look into a two-year extension with an option for a third year? Why, why would we approve... I mean, what kind of negotiating position does that put you in? <laughs> well, it doesn't put us in any because he's not watching this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it does. do we have to do it tonight? Well, the lease technically expires in December, so you, you don't have to do any. I mean, you know, leases go month to month like this all the time. So that's why I said, if you'd like, we'll just go back and tell them, no, we're only interested in, in two. Okay. And Can we just talk about a two-year extension and just say leave off the last year? Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Just tell them about the agenda item on the fire station building, not this, <laughs> this agenda item. <laughs> I mean, that would be moving very fast, but, you know, it's remotely possible. So I just hate to see us stuck. I mean, it's very unlikely. But still, I mean, why lock us into something that, yeah, no, that's fine. So yeah, okay. So we'll 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 go back and and ask him to have a two year lease and see what he says. Can we approve it? Say we can approve. We would approve with that modification, and then you can say they approved it. You want the deal? Here's sure. The deal. Okay. I was going to say that anyway, but yeah. <laughs> so do we need a motion for that? Yes, we do. Everybody agree with that concept, or does anyone disagree with that concept? Okay. So, does somebody want to make a motion that we approve? Barbara, you want to ask if anyone in the public wants to speak? Does anyone in the public want to speak? Thank you, Bill. I don't see any hands. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion to that effect that we renew it for two years with the option for the third year. Um, and that being our first negotiation to uh to, that the board's approved and then we'll go from there based on their feedback okay i don't know that we need we just make it a motion to approve to with an option to renew and then we understand okay motion to approve the two years with the option to renew the third year with that under the same rate the rates that they have for base rents for each year is there a second I'll second. Is there any further discussion? I think y'all are wildly optimistic, but I don't. I do too. I do too. But still, <laughs> yeah. Um, that's just. Um, I guess we need a roll call vote. Okay, President Dye. Yes. Vice President Clark. Aye. Director Blanchard. Aye. Director Seaton. Aye. Director Sukumau. Aye. Okay, Very motion well. motion to Director Seaton, uh, seconded by Director Clark. Motion passes 5-0. Right. Moving on. Uh, consideration of super authority given to the side of the court. A um, couple things that I'd like to call out. Uh, uh, I will note that in the staff report from Sam for September, uh, you mentioned this, Chuck, but Granada's uh, flow rate right now is 19.64, less than 20%. So we have dropped from 30% of these of the SAM facility to get below 20%. I don't know if it's what's causing it, but <laughs> definitely a major change. And uh, since we pay for the administrative or the management costs, with the operations costs of the yeah, and M. yeah based on our percentage of the flow, we just had a 10% or less um, re reduction in our costs, our, our contributions to SAM. Well, yeah, it depends on how you look at it. But anyone else, anyone have any comments on that? All right, second of all, I, I will say, um, we had a, a finance committee meeting for SAM today and a uh, couple good things, uh, I think, you know, as you may know, Sam, the SAM staff and consultants have been working really hard in getting the financial systems in order there, and they really are making great progress. Um, 
in the past there were issues with the member agencies paying their assessments, which was pretty much entirely due to the fact of, of the, the way the um, requests for payments were made and confusing accounting. And I think now due to a more smoothly operating system, SAM is 100% from all the agencies for this quarter in terms of our payments, which I think is a good thing. Also, um, they are working on a, a new presentation of their financial information. And this is something that, um, you know, I kept looking at their financial reports and trying to make sense of them. And I took the report that GCSD has and I gave it to, the, to Kishin, the director, and said, couldn't Sam give us a report like this? And they're working on it. And they came up with a draft of it today and they Kitchen even credited uh, our GCSD financial reports and the clarity of them as and one of the reasons that they have worked so hard to improve their financial presentations. So I think that's compliment to GCSD and to our finances and to Delia and to Chuck. Um, and a good thing. Yes. Just a quick comment. Our financial reports are generated out of QuickBooks, which is what Sam previously had prior to implementing uh, the program that was, or the software that was implemented in 2015, which actually is the program that created all of their problems. So I just want to mention that. I don't know that that was all of their problems. Well, yeah. yeah I would... <laughs> it was definitely it was the, the setup of their, or the template of their financial statement. I'm glad I'm glad we set the bar low and they can hop over it. So. <laughs> <laughs> their financial people are doing a good job. They really are. So um, they're, they're really getting things working. I'm happy to learn about the finances. For, that's good to know. Thanks very much. Really help Barbara on that. It's a big issue, I knew. Yeah. yeah. And then um, the, the biggest ongoing issue for Sam, as far as I'm concerned, and, and Matthew can chime in, is that there seems to be a sense that there are major uh, renovations and re things needed at the same facility, which is probably true, but uh, hopefully we will be working on a capital improvement program for that facility that will prioritize these. Um, the reason I bring this up is just a heads up that there is talk of numbers that would result in significantly additional costs to our district. And so, um, I'm hoping that the process of putting together the capital improvement program will prove that uh, we do have a confidence that the items that need replacement and repair will be repaired in terms of their priority order at a level that works for all of the member agencies. So something to Keep, keep in mind. I'm going to do a tour of the plant tomorrow. I think, Matthew, you've been invited to do a tour. Any other director, in fact, I think any member of the public who wants to do a tour of the facility is welcome to, but I know they're going to um, talk about some of the pumps that they feel need replacing and ways to do that. And we'll go into more detail on that, I think, at another meeting. Matthew, did you want to I just got the uh, invitation for that tour uh, today, and I can't make it tomorrow, so... Uh, I told Kishan, I thanked him and said I would arrange to get another tour sometime, uh, which would be a good thing because they are. Uh, well, Kishan is proposing a lot of money in a relatively short time. And I will confess to, that I'm quite confused because he's got, a, there's another track, the Oresco proposal that uh, some ties in with the, the, the CIP, but not quite. And it's, and it's a lot of money as well. And um, where I can I can't not predict where this is headed, but uh, uh, unless uh, some sugar daddy comes along and drops millions of dollars on Sam, uh, either we uh, uh, greatly raise all our rates and all the, all the member agencies, or we figure out some way to go more slowly. And then there was the, uh, the BOD. There's uh, 
some sort of uh, input to the plant that's causing the, uh, what's BOD, uh, biological Bio oxygen demand? Biochemical oxygen demand. Biochemical oxygen demand, oxygen demand uh, is, uh, uh, if, if too much of certain constituents come into the plant, uh, essentially they eat up all the oxygen and uh, the end undigested, uh, or I should say less digested materials exit the plant into the ocean, and this is not good nor allowed. And uh, they've been uh, running a lot of tests and trying to figure out where this is coming from. And the, uh, the last thing I saw, Barbara, correct me if this is not the latest, but they are they're now thinking that it comes from the region of Princeton Harbor. I just got, in fact, I just got an update from Kishin because I'd asked for him earlier. I guess just got one a little bit ago. Um, they, it's been way outside the permitted levels and it, he's, the plant is slowly coming back to normal and they've activated the aeration basins. The bacteria is starting to work, return to normal levels, though it is not there yet and is expected to take another week to 10 days to stabilize. This assumes there are no more upsets. And they have two additional old aeration tanks online and running. And, uh, the numbers, again, Princeton area, it says in front of the Princeton pump station was where it was really high coming in. So it's kind of mysterious. Um, they're investigating and they're doing some tests. Um, they have started on fog, which is fats, oils, and grease inspections, which goes to restaurants. And with, they've hired an experienced pretreatment specialist who's checked on a few breweries and distilleries yesterday and today and not found any abnormality in their process. Evidently, breweries are a key source of this problem. So these things come up and they are investigating and they don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, and let me, I'll give you the, I won't say it's a layman's version because I'm not a process engineer, but... <laughs> Fats, oils, and grease are, are, are different than uh, BOD, bio, biochemical oxygen demand. So a plant is designed, and basically what, they're, what, what you're measuring with BOD is the organic loading into a plant. And the whole principle of a plant is to take the organics, make them inert, and send them out to the ocean so they're not sucking up oxygen, like someone said. So the plants are designed for 300 to 350 uh, parts per million BOD, They've been getting in 1,200 when they had the plant upset, so three times what the plant's designed for. Now, that's why you have extra aeration basins. You put them online. You inject more air to deal with that extra BOD. Um, they're down back now to an uh, input of 500 or 600 uh, BOD, so they should be better. I saw Kishin's email on Princeton. Princeton had a spike. Testing for BOD in a raw sewage level without doing a, what they call a, a, an aliquot sample, which is eight samples a, a day at spaced out times, is difficult. If you're just doing a grab sample, just dipping a cup in, you might get a hot one, you might not. So it's a difficult process, but, but hopefully that whatever that source problem is of the BOD is, is coming down and they should be able to handle it. And they've been able to manage it so that the effluent that's going out into the ocean still meets all standards. No, it does not. They've, they exceeded their standards. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> their standards, a maximum of 45 uh, uh, BOD on, a, on a, I think, a weekly basis and an average of 30. They had some samples that were at 75, 100, 200. So they have exceeded their permit. So this is something we thought we should share with you because yeah. it's a concern and they're still investigating and we do not know the reason. There we are. Sam's going to cost a lot more money and getting their permit. But the finance, financial systems are working much, are doing much better. All right, moving on. Anything else on that topic? Nope. Matthew, anything else? All right. Uh, no. Moving on to the consent agenda. Um, can I have a motion? Does anyone remove anything from the consent agenda? 
Okay. Um, can I, I, have one, I have one comment. Okay. On uh, uh, minutes for our last meeting, uh, the action agenda item one, the uh, last name of our PAC chair is misspelled. Oh, sorry. And that's the only correction <laughs> that, I, that I can see. Uh, other than that, unless anyone wants to discuss any issues, I'll move that we approve the consent agenda. Yes, thank you. Um, As amended. Is there a second? Okay, um, we have a roll call, please. Uh, President Dye? Yes. Vice President Clark? Aye. Director Blanchard? Aye. Director Seaton? Aye. Director Sukumel? Aye. Consent agenda has been approved. Okay, motion, motion of Director Clark, seconded by Director Blanchard. Motion approved by Joe. Committee reports, reports on seminars, conferences, or committee meetings? None. <laughs> okay, and five Attorney's report. No report. General manager's report. Uh, nothing further. Okay, administrative staff report. Uh, nothing further to report. Can you give us a report on the situation with the homeless in the Burnham Strip? I do not have an update. I have not spoken uh, with anyone from Caltrans. Um, I haven't had a chance to go out there and check, but I assume that they're, they are That's still- I went not too long ago, there, there was somebody still there. Yeah. Yeah. So I will uh, continue to leave messages for the person I'm being told is responsible. I don't know that they will actually be able to do anything based upon the new procedures they have because of COVID. But uh, we'll see. I, I thought Barbara, you had said that there some MCC was working on it as well, or something like that. So um, I actually I should have probably mentioned some committee reports. I met with um, the president of um, uh, Len Erickson, the president of the MCC, had coffee with him to just talk about coordination. Um, one of the things that came up is that they do have regular meetings with Caltrans, and I said, oh can you help us with a couple of our issues? And so I sent him a follow-up email on uh, the homeless issue and also the snails, because as you know, the, the Caltrans is not, even though we did exactly what the agriculture department requested and acted quickly to deal with the invasive with snails, um, it's very difficult when Caltrans is not doing their part on the adjacent things. But back to the homeless, um, they said that they would raise the issue there. I have reported it on their official forum twice. My big concern is right now there's a big issue about pollution in the harbor, and we're hearing about that in other directions. You've got somebody living on the strip right there. There's no way they're not using those, um, our, our wetland areas or as a toilet. I mean, we know that other the surfers do as well, and some of that will be hopefully taken care of when the bathroom's going across the street. But I mean, there's a guy living right there next to the skate ramp in the Caltrans right of way. And it doesn't seem like it's the right thing. So I don't know. I guess there's not much more we can do. Anyone have any thoughts on this? Nope. All right. Um, I did talk to uh, the person who is the forget the name, uh, the county has um, a group that does outreach and offers services to homeless people. And it's my understanding that after I spoke with her last week, she was going to go out and speak with the two gentlemen who are living out there. And I have not spoken to her since, but from what I recall, she was familiar with these both of these persons and they have in the past refused services. So. I don't really know what more can be done as far as offering services on the county level. So it's really just come, boils down to uh, Caltrans enforcing, uh, you know, removing them from their property. And that may be a difficult process. Um, I was informed they have to go through Sacramento because of COVID. And I don't believe that the sheriff can do anything more. I did have the sheriff go out there and they spoke with them, but they can't arrest them or do any, or ask them to even leave for that matter. So there's really nothing that 
the sheriffs can do, unless they're doing something illegal. No, that's that's where we are. Thank you, Delia. Thank you for all your work on that. Oh, no problem. You really put in a bunch of time on it and I appreciate it because I really do think it's a problem and it's a problem for the harbor, the cleanliness of the harbor. We've got people. I agree. It's a and, and it looks bad. I mean, it, it, nobody wants to go out there and see these home, you know, they've got a shopping cart and their sleeping bags and, and a pile of garbage and trash. Yeah, it's really awful. All right. I have, I have one other uh, question on the staff report. Um, I know we're, or it looks like we're interviewing for the assistant administrator position currently. Do we have a, uh, a timeline for when we're going to have that staffed? That's a good question. Um, I was thinking we should have someone chosen by middle of December, I hope. Um, I'm going to be going out of town next week. We'll have a temp here. Um, and I hope to do some in person with mask interviews <laughs> and social distancing. But so far, I've done uh, six, pardon me, five. Uh, Zoom meetings, and I'm really excited because um, all of the people I've interviewed are, are highly qualified um, and great personality. It's going to be a tough decision, but um, there's a couple of people that I particularly like and think will do very well in this position. So, so I'm happy uh, we've gotten some good choices here. So hopefully, but uh, between you know, Chuck will probably want to do a preliminary review of whoever I wheedled it you know, get it down to, but I think we've got some really great choices here, so. Much longer, so so you, there's no, is there a set window or you're just saying you'd like to wrap it up and have have, have something by the plan for next year, basically, but the first, no set I, deadlines. Yeah, I hope to have uh, the in-person interviews done by the first or second week in December and have a decision as soon as that's over, so, I mean no reason to delay it. The only issue I have, of course, is um, the county require, you know, restrictions. I don't know what they are for offices because I have been coming in by myself. I haven't really had to deal with that. I don't particularly uh, care to have to wear a mask in the office, but if that's what's necessary, then that's what's going to have to happen. I definitely am getting buried in all the little work around here. It's definitely more than one person can handle for the length of time that I've been doing it. So <laughs> I, I definitely need to get someone in here right away. It, you know, we'll just uh, have to wear masks and, you know, do what we can to uh, stay safe and work together and get trained because I will have to work with someone and train them. But that puts me in close proximity with someone. So, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So by mid-December at the latest. So, yeah, and, and we can figure that out. We're, we're an essential service, so we're obviously allowed to be in the office. And if you're in separate offices, you know, Dudek's doing the same thing down here, so. Maybe you could use the conference, the community room, since we're not having meetings there. Right. We want you to be safe. Yeah. Yes, I will be. Thank you. I have a question and a comment about the Burnham Strip property. How long ago was it that um, RCD uh, and uh, was supposed to uh, work on the non-native plants out there and uh, essentially get rid of them? Is that a year ago or two years ago? I'd have to look. Uh, we were supposed to have a more aggressive mowing uh you know, schedule. Um, I'm really not sure who's managing that, if Claudia was doing that, or if um, I did talk to um, Enviromo at one point and advised him, but um, it's not something that's really been on the top of my list. And as far as what the management plan is, I don't think the RCD actually had any other um, steps that they were taking. It was really just a matter, a matter of the mowing management. But I think it looks great out there. I don't know if you've noticed, there is no pampas grass out there anymore. It looks really good. My, my comment is there's pampas grass out there. There is? And jubata grass. I, I walked by two days ago and it looks like there's more than there was before they did anything. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't notice. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it's all. 
Yeah, because they. I know they, that stuff is very difficult to eradicate. Yeah. He did. He did come out and dig it up and flip it over, which was what they would thought would, you know, keep it from coming back. But you know, if you like, I, we can go. I can go out there and take a look and uh, ask uh, Enviromo to do that again. If you know, if you think it's worthwhile. Well, I, if especially if it's in, in the area of the um, new wet weather storage tanks, is it in that area? Yes. I haven't noticed it, so I don't know. I'll look. I'll look, I'll take a look at it over the weekend and and let you. I'll report back at the next meeting on that. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, engineers report. I will just comment that um, we have a written engineers report. So it looks as if uh, the documentation for the you know, everyone's very interested in the whole Murata Bridge situation. Um, they're, they're close to getting approval for uh, putting the sewer line into the state parks right away. And uh, they are hoping to bid it in January. So that project should start hopefully in the spring, along with a lot of other projects that we're hoping to start in the spring. And Big Wave had a grand opening on the site. And I guess they have agreed that they're going to pay the sewer fees, but with some modifications, so. Yes, and, and Barbara, I think you might be mixing, unless you, I missed an email somewhere. They're not looking at uh, bidding the project in January, the Medio Creek project. So John Rain, John, we've submitted all our documentation. We just had the environmental work completed. So we're waiting on the city of Half Moon Bay uh, planning department to approve our uh, CDP. So, so right. and, and says, John, John Rayner is pushing hard for that from Kennedy Jenks. Yeah, he said city staff intend to process the CDP as an amendment to the original CDP. We are hoping this can be finalized no later than in January. So advertising for construction bids can begin by the end of January. Yeah, that's uh, uh, maybe a little optimistic, but yeah, he's pushing hard, certainly. And, and, and we're doing the same. So we're processing a, a, a CD, CDX, which is an exemption from a CDP uh, for our, I'm using too many acronyms now. So <laughs> our coastal development permit for our capital improvement program where we're replacing a, a bunch of the existing sewers in, in El Granada. So John Raynard and Kennedy Jenks are processing that through the county department because that's within the, the county and they're they're hopefully getting that uh, completed in the beginning of the year. We're getting a little pushback from the county as they do so, but they're prosecuting that as well. So, so I mean, that's important to part of our community know that not only um, are we taking care of things at Sam, we're doing our uh, big project to replace the, the, you know, the sewer lines that are in most need of replacement are all going to happen. Yeah. yeah, we're doing sewer line relocation in Meteor Creek, so it takes it off the bridge across the creek, and we're doing sewer replacement in our main body area of our district, if you will. Through the scattered, scattered different projects. So, right. Yes. Good. Okay. Future agenda items. Nothing? Okay. Um, is there anything further we need to talk about tonight? Feels like it was a long meeting, even though we didn't have much on the agenda, but it, I guess it wasn't that long. <laughs> really savings. Barbara, before you, before you go, um, well, Eric, I need your signature on one thing, and Barbara, in order to execute Rebecca's contract, um, your signature is required. Okay. And I have warrants, so whoever's available tomorrow. Uh, I'll be available tomorrow. I, I, Probably late morning would work for me. Okay, that'd be perfect. I'll, I'll contact you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to swing down at some point tomorrow. You'll be around tomorrow? Okay. Yeah, I'm around. I got to check my work calendar, but I can. Okay. Now I go to the post office. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. No problem. Anything else we need to discuss? And I'll point out we're on the uh, Delia set us up for the new GCSD Zoom. So we're on that. It worked, worked flawlessly. 
All right. Great. And are we going to have a December meeting? We should talk about that for a minute, excuse me, teacher. Uh, yeah, unless, we, we generally try not to unless something pops up. The Zoom meetings are a little easier, obviously. So, you know, I'll work with you, Barbara, to figure out as we get closer to it what we need done. But I don't see anything pressing uh, as of now. Yeah, generally, though, um, we would have the swearing in and the election of officers. But uh, many times or many years in the past, we've done it in January. So is, is there any way to do it earlier in January or even have a second meeting in January so that it's not before Christmas, but it doesn't go quite as long? Or is that, I guess that doesn't work. Never it, if you're not meeting at a meeting, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. Well, the uh, newly elected board member will be on the board in December. Right. We'll be sworn in. And do we have someone to swear her in at this point? Matthew, were you checking? Oh, uh, no, I, I, got, I got no response from Becky Spears' office. Okay, well, I, if you want to direct me, I'll go ahead and make some uh, inquiries, if you like. It'll be by Zoom, so it should be pretty easy for someone to yeah. do. And I would like to do something special for Nancy. If we're... Okay. Yeah, I promised them that it would only take five minutes of her time. Yeah, okay, well, I'll see what I can do. I'll let you know. Okay. Well, May I say thank you to everybody for I, I very much enjoyed working with you all. I miss you all very much. We owe you a cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're here. Yes, yeah, yeah, friend. Friend. We're We're friend. Friend. We can make that happen. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna sign off now. It's a pleasure, right. Jim. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jim. All right, thank you, Jim. Okay. So okay. Uh, thanks very much, everybody. Thank all you, right. David. Okay, take care. Bye. Right. Jim, yeah. Jim, will you be home tomorrow? Yes, yeah, see you over here. Okay, I'll give you a call. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very right. much. Take care. Good, good right. to see you, everybody. Yeah. Are we adjourned? You, you have to end us, Delia. I will. Okay. <laughs>